screen for two minutes. Um, so you can gather together the bits that you need. This might be a surprise. I didn't list in the event that um, you... It would be good to have something with you that weighs about one kilogram. I've put like a bag of sugar. I've got a bag of flour. Two food cans are due. They're about 400 grams each, aren't they? Um, and your questions. Question number one. Why can't humans fly without help? You can choose as many of these as you like. It might be one, might be two, might be all of them. Is it A, they're too heavy? B, their muscles aren't strong enough, or C, they don't have wings, just stringy little arms. Uh, and question two, the rocket Saturn V took the first humans to the moon in 1969. Why, soon after it took off, did bits fall off? Obviously, for me, it's better if you don't know and you give a guess. But if you do know, then, I don't know, you could make a note of that if you like. Right, I'm going to go and get my glass and my toilet roll and blow my nose and then we'll get started. Thank you for that, my dears. Thank you for putting up with the terrible traffic. You see, more of you have gathered. Right, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get started. Do, 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 do. Ah, hello, science lines. Hello, I am Lara. I'm actually trained to teach physics up to A level, which is quite useful because this module is all about flight and, and this, it's just all physics, basically, except I've slipped a little bit of biology in there. So we're mainly going to talk about weight today. Um, but we're going to do it by talking a little bit about birds and a little bit about pterosaurs. But there's not, there's not anything like enough pterosaur information in this lesson. So the next thing I'm doing is a Lego story time on pterosaurs. So don't worry if you want more about flying reptiles. Right, we're just going to do an activity straight away. 
because we, we've only done this once before. It's a really good one. You just need a glass, like any kind of glass. And you need some toilet roll. I'm using a kitchen roll, actually, because that is a bit robust and I've got a cold at the moment. <laughs> so you need to be able to turn the glass upside down and stuff toilet roll or kitchen roll in so that it stays in. So it's sort of harder than it seems. And you're not allowed to have any poking out of the bottom. I think that's okay. Sometimes it works well if you stuff it and then you turn it around and then it stays in better. Wow, yeah, just nip, nailed it. And then you get a big bowl of water or a pan of water. I think more is, is more in this situation. There we go. It can't be poking out of the bottom. I had it and then I blew it. Ugh. Uh, yeah, get a big bowl of water or a big pan of water. And then you just hold the glass upside down and you just dunk it in and you see what happens. We've done this once before when I did my um, deep sea diving show. Yeah, here we go, right. So I'll just pop you, I've got a bag of flour here. I'll pop you down on top of that. Ready? Uh, so it's really important to hold the glass completely flat so it hits the water like dead on. And then just push it down as far as you can go. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, fail! Ah, it's escaping! Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's a good job this one isn't getting saved on YouTube. Oh wait, it is. Yeah, so when you lift it out, look... Right, just wait, wait there. Goodness sake. At least if you're watching on catch-up, you can just fast-forward through this nonsense, can't you? Well, I'll deal with you later. Maybe toilet roll is better. Yesterday I used toilet roll. Right, <laughs> where were we? Oh, now the, now the blooming glass is wet as well. Right, dry the glass on your trousers and then stick some roll into the glass so that it stays like this and then dunk it under like this. And what you see is the tissue stays dry. <laughs> you might also feel something. Have a little think about what you can feel because we'll talk about that later. But yeah, how good is that? When it works, I find this... Uh, very interesting and impressive. It's a game that you can play in the bath for many, many minutes. <laughs> so when you pull the glass out, you find, if you've done it right a second time, yeah, the tissue stays, stays dry. So we need to talk a bit later on about why the tissue stays dry. Because like, it's, it's quite tenuously related to flow. <laughs> but it's a good activity, so I wanted to do it with you. Um, okay, right, so we're talking about forces today, really. And a force is just a posh or a pull. Easy, right? Just a push or a pull, that's what you call a force. So if you're, if you're pushing something, you would say that you are applying a force. Same if you're pulling something. Now obviously, if you like want to get a rocket into space, just saying, oh, we need to give it a bit of a push, it's not very useful. So physicists need to put numbers on things, right? And you are used to this, obviously. We measure all kinds of things, don't we? We measure length. What do we measure length in? What's the unit of length? Five, ten? I mean, you could be saying a lot of things, but physicists generally, scientists measure length in metres. Uh, we measure time, obviously, again, you know how we measure time in all kinds of different ways, but seconds is the standard way of doing it in physics. And force is measured in uh, Newtons, because of Isaac Newton, you know, famous scientist. So you can push something with a force of like five newtons, ten newtons. The harder you push, the more newtons it is, right? I was thinking, <laughs> you, you can kind of picture probably what a metre is. You've probably got an idea of what a second is, like one, two, three. We need to think about what, what one newton feels like. So if you've got anything in your house that weighs about a kilogram, one newton is how hard you have to push one kilogram to make it travel one metre in one second. So if the kilogram is still pushing it so that it travels one meter in one second, that's like one newton's worth of push. This is quite a difficult thing to do because like, my arm is not a meter long, but it's also not half a meter long. So this isn't very neat. I mean, we could just pretend that our arms are about a meter long if we stretch as far as we possibly can. If you get got a kilogram thing or like two food cans would do, then when you, if you push out in one second, that's like roughly about a Newton. So are you ready? I, I'll count and then we'll push. Ready? One, two, three, four. Push. Two, three, four. 
three, four. We can pull as well, of course, because that is still a Newton. If you pull a kilogram, one meter in one second, pull two, three, four, and push two, three, four, and pull two. Probably going a bit faster, aren't I? Three, four, and push two, three, four. That's one Newton. Two, three, four. That's two Newtons. Two, three, four. That's one Newton. Two. You get what I mean. Right. So that's that's one Newton. Very quickly. Um, just to, I mean, obviously, you might have absolutely no idea, but just to, like, try and get a little feel for these things. How much of a push in Newtons do you reckon an average car engine provides? So, obviously, a car, it's still, the engine has got to make it go forward, so the engine needs to, like, apply a force to the car, a force needs to be applied. How much of a push does the engine give? I've said I'll give you ten seconds to estimate. Uh, six, so I will. Very roughly, because cars are obviously very different, very roughly about a thousand newtons. Your car might provide more than a thousand newtons, but yeah, roughly a thousand. All right then, I asked you some questions at the beginning, which we haven't answered yet, so don't worry if you've just joined us. Um, what about the Saturn V rocket? The Saturn V rocket that took the first humans up to space so that they could walk on the moon. So if a car is about a thousand, what's the, how much push did the Saturn V rocket need to get a massive rocket all the way into space so that three astronauts could be in space and two of them could go on the moon. It's at nearly eight million newtons. Nearly eight million newtons. All right, yeah, but technology is just getting better, isn't it? Scientists are getting better at their jobs. What about the latest NASA rocket? We'll talk about this a bit later. So the Artemis um, mission is going to take the first woman astronaut and the first astronaut of colour. The first astronaut that isn't a white bloke, basically, about time, to the moon um, in about 2025. So a couple of years from when I'm saying this now. It, that's going to use... A force of about 4 million newtons is what those engines can provide. 40! 40, 40 million newtons! Alright, so that's given you some to no idea about uh, what a force is. Let's talk a little bit about force diagrams and weight then, because I did say this lesson was on weight. Right, have you got a pen? You should have brought a pen. Get a pen, quite anything you like actually. Using two hands, please can you push the pen really hard but you're not allowed to make it move. So if you've got like a table or a cushion or something in front of you, that would be best. Put it on the table or whatever surface you're near. Push the pen really hard with both hands, but you're not allowed to move the pen at all. What are you gonna do? What are you doing? What, is, this, is it really hard or really obvious? I don't know. Oh yeah, so probably, probably you're, you're doing this. <laughs> like that, right? If you push on a pen really hard, both sides, it doesn't move anywhere. Why not? Well, force diagram time. All right. So this is a very uh, classic thing in science. You do this a lot if you do GCSE uh, physics. When scientists draw a force diagram, it's just a little very simple diagram to show what the forces acting on a thing are. So you draw the thing. That's just a dot. I know, right? Nice. It doesn't matter if it's like a cat or a pen. It's just a dot. And then you have to draw arrows to show it, to show like what what that thing is kind of experiencing. So you might think we would draw arrows like this because we were pushing on the pen from both sides, but you don't actually. You've got to like be the pen. You've got to think about how the pen is feeling. So the pen is being pushed that way by one of your hands and it's being pushed that way by the other one of your hands. So that would be a force diagram for what we just did, right? One hand pushed that way, one hand pushed that way. So two forces. Um, if, what, well, yeah, to show how big the force is, that's just how long the arrow is. So a, a really big force on this side would be a really big arrow. Sorry, where me, mate. And obviously a very gentle push would be a very small arrow. Um, so, yeah, the thing that I need you to remember is that if something is still, if something is staying still, then the forces on it must be balanced. Which kind of makes sense. Like, I, I feel like this is not one of those weird physics things where you don't get it. Like, if the forces on something are balanced, if you're pushing at the same, with the same amount of force on both sides, it's, it doesn't move. It stays still. And if you suddenly pushed really hard with one hand, so this force got really big, then that thing, you can look at that force diagram and think, if it was still, then now it must be moving in that direction. Right? That's okay. Right? Okay. But 
but you're probably still now, maybe, you might not be, but if you're like sitting on a chair, you're probably sitting still. You're not falling through the chair. So, so what forces are acting on you? The forces on you must be balanced. Well, next, next question, which people on Facebook were giving some really interesting answers to. Um, where can you go on earth and not, I'm trying to actually, I'm, I'm rephrasing the question. Yeah, I've realised actually I've got some, maybe got some slightly dodgy answers to this on Facebook because I, I didn't write the question very well. Where can you go on earth and not experience gravity? Where can you go on earth where gravity isn't acting on you, right? So gravity is a force that pulls things down to earth. Where can you go on earth? Where are the places that you can go where gravity doesn't pull on you? That's the better question. Where can you go on earth where gravity doesn't pull on you? Have a think. Where can you go on earth where you don't experience gravity pulling on you, where gravity doesn't pull on you? So uh, yesterday on Facebook, quite a lot of people were saying the sea. You could go in the sea and then gravity wouldn't be pulling on you. Uh, quite a lot of people were, were telling me about the NASA zero gravity room that they have. Um, and, but what I was, and I've realised why my mistake actually, because I asked them where can you go and not feel gravity, which is not quite the same thing. There is nowhere on earth that you can go where gravity is not happening, right? Gravity is caused by things that have mass. If something is made of particles, it has gravity. So even you've got a tiny little bit of gravity, you're slightly pulling things towards you, not so that anything can feel it, but the earth is massive. So it's, it's got this force of gravity pulling everything towards it. You can't turn it off. When you're in the sea, this, we, we'll talk about this exactly next week when we talk about hot air balloons. When you're in the sea, the water's pushing you up so you can't feel gravity, but it's still there. And the force, how much gravity is pulling you down, is called your weight. So really, when you draw a force diagram, if it's something that is on Earth, there's always going to be a force arrow acting down like this, which is weight. So weight is a force. Weight is measured in newtons. So I've just said that if the force is acting on something, if something is still, the force is acting on it must be balanced. And this is obviously not a balanced force diagram. This looks like the thing is just falling through the floor. So what's really weird, before I stop talking and give you something to do, um, is that if you're, say, sitting on a chair, obviously you have weight which is pulling you down, but the chair is pushing back up. I know, it's really weird. So this would be a force diagram for, say, like a pen sitting on your hand. The pen is pushing down on your hand and the hand is pushing up on you or you sitting on a chair, right? So anything that has weight, unless it's like, unless you're falling through the centre of the earth, there must be something pushing back on you. Whoa, that's a lot of talking. I, I think you're ready for my sheet. So a lot of you know Wormy, it's the Theatre of Science mascot. She's been, she's been checking out some lava. It's not a safe thing to do. Don't do what Wormy does. She lives a dangerous life, but she's been checking out some lava. It was all still to start with, but some of it has started moving. So I need you to look at these force diagrams and tell me which direction is the, is the lava moving in and is Wormy safe? A lot of people correctly pointing out on Facebook yesterday, of course she's not safe. She's hanging out really, really close to lava. So yeah, just to reiterate kids, don't ever go near lava. Um, but tell me which way this is moving. Tell me if she is like actually dead. <laughs> so A, we've got a force diagram here of Wormy next to some lava and um, the arrows on the lava are pointing up and down and they're both the same size. B, we've got arrows pointing up and down and they're both the same size and arrows pointing to the left and right and they're both the same size as well. C, we've got exactly the same thing but the arrow on the left is quite long which way is that lava going? Remember, if something is still, then the forces on it must be balanced. Um, D, she's in space. She's got a little space helmet on. And there's a blob of lava with just an arrow going off to the left and an arrow going off to the right. But the one on the right is longer than the one on the left. E, we've got an arrow pointing straight down and an arrow pointing straight to the right. And those are the only arrows. And they're both the same size. F, we've got an arrow pointing up which is very long and a small arrow pointing down and Wormy is underneath the lava this time and G uh, we, we're in space again and we've just got a blob of lava with no arrows on it at all so what's happening there 
where is the lava going? And can you fill in these blanks for me if you get to the end? If an object is still, the something on it must be something. Oh yeah, sorry, I should have said, I've written on the sheet, haven't I? Tell me where the lava's going, or you can write an S, please, if the lava's staying still. And um, if you haven't got this sheet, then you can just do it in your head. But it's available at the moment for my Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, you can go there and download it. E was catching a lot of people out on Facebook. I mean, not catching them out, because I haven't taught you it, but I was getting some interesting answers for E. G as well is a bit weird, isn't it? I'll, I'll give you um, 20 seconds. All right, should we go through it? If I'm going a bit fast, then um, sorry. <laughs> but you don't forget this is recorded, so if I'm going too fast, you can always watch it when it's finished and go at your own pace. So A, oh, get my little dinosaur pen, here we go. Um, the forces on this thing are balanced, right? And I've, I've told you that it was still to start with. So if it was still and these forces have appeared and they're balanced, then it's going to be staying still. This is like when you pushed on the pen, I suppose, isn't it? And the lava's getting pushed up and down the same amount of force, so it's staying still. And B, uh, yeah, that's the same. I mean, this is like if a pen was on a table and you were pushing on it, isn't it? But all these forces are totally balanced, so that lava isn't going anywhere. So Wormy is, uh, you know, as safe as she's going to get in this situation. C, oh, R.I.P. Wormy, people were crying on Facebook. Yeah, because now the forces aren't balanced, the arrow on the left is longer, which means that the lava's going in Wormy's direction. Sorry, Wormy dude. You're a goner. Uh, Wormy in space? Well, yeah, this is, I sort of put this one in um, because there's no no gravity in space, is there? Wormy is not experiencing gravity at the moment. Um, there's just an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right, and the arrow to the right is bigger. So the lava is heading to the right. E, yeah, this one's weird. So there's just an arrow pointing downwards, an arrow, arrow pointing to the right, and they're both the same size. Um, in that situation, you actually, what the lava would be doing would be moving diagonally down, like exactly in between the arrows, yeah? You could sort of try it, couldn't you, on a, on a pen. If you push forwards and you push to the side, then the pen goes diagonally. Uh, so that would be what was happening. F, don't stand underneath lava. But yeah, strictly speaking, if this lava was still for magical reasons and then these forces got applied, it would be moving upwards. There's more of a push upwards than there is a pull downwards. So Wormy, I guess, is safe. Um, and G, well, yeah, there's, there's no forces acting on this lava, but that means that they're balanced, yeah? So in fact, that lava would not be moving. So um, well done if you got those, and well done if you didn't have a clue, but you listened to all that and now you understand it a bit better. Fill in the banks. If an object is still, the forces on it must be balanced. <laughs> Please, sorry. If something is still, the forces on it must be balanced. Right, so I said all these lessons are supposed to be about flight, so finally we've got to have something flight. Uh, to get something off the ground, the upwards force has got to be bigger than the downwards force, right? That makes sense. Um, 
So to get something off the ground, yeah, we need to have whatever this upwards arrow is be more than, than the weight of the thing. Um, so, yeah, one of the... So this brings us a little bit to birds, because I always thought that birds have hollow bones to make them lighter so that they can fly, because then the weight arrow is a bit smaller, so it's easier to get off the ground. Apparently that's not true. Yeah, the internet's very clear that birds don't have hollow bones to make them lighter. Like if you get a bird and a little mammal, like a rat or something, um, that are the same size, the bird still weighs the same as the rat. The hollow bones don't make a difference. I read somewhere that maybe they've got hollow bones so that they can have like other heavier bits like muscles and feathers. Um, I still wanted to show you this. Um, so it might have something to do with their weight. It actually turns out that it's more to do with getting oxygen into their bodies. Um, the oxygen actually, the air goes like through their bones because they need a lot of oxygen because they need really strong muscles. So they're kind of concentrating more on this upwards force. But anyway, look at this. <laughs> Apparently, in ye olden times, they used to use hollowed out bird bones because they were naturally hollow to make all kinds of stuff. So this is a knife handle and the oldest known musical instrument that we found is a vulture bone that was turned into a little whistle. I know, apparently um, Homo sapiens, like us, could do music and Neanderthals that we were living alongside couldn't play musical instruments. Like, I don't know how they know that. But anyway, yeah, 40,000 years old, this hollowed out bone. But yeah, apparently it's a bit of a myth. Um, can you think of a bird that wouldn't have hollowed out bones? Just while we're talking about birds. Think of a bird that wouldn't need hollowed out bones. Someone got this on Facebook, I was impressed. A couple of people saying birds that don't fly, like uh, emus or ostriches. Actually, some of them do have some hollow bones, again, because it's to get the air in um, to sort of support their bodies. It's not really about flying. Um, but yeah, penguins do not have hollow bones. They've got solid bones all the way through. I get because they swim. So if they swam down deep under the water where there's lots of pressure, I guess their little hollow bones might get crushed. I don't know. But anyway, yes. We're not so, obviously it helps if you don't weigh very much to be able to fly as an animal. Um, but what a lot of animals are doing is they're, they've evolved to make this upwards force really big. So how do they do that? Well, let's go back to the magnificent tissue underwater activity. <laughs> so when you push the glass under the water, you can feel something pushing back, right? So that's air pushing back. Obviously air is a physical thing, it's particles. And when you push down on air, just like any other thing, it pushes back. How have I got into this situation where I'm holding a bowl like this and a glass? Okay, I'll take that out. There we go. Um, yeah, and the deeper you push the glass under the water, the more you can feel the air pushing back. So that's why the tissue doesn't get wet because you basically just trapped an air bubble and the water's trying to get in and the air's like, no. <laughs> so. Birds use this Newton's law idea that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So birds have really big wings, so they can push down on the air. And when they push down on the air, the air pushes back on them. Humans, one of the reasons humans can't fly is because we've just got these weird little arms. So if you try it now, you can feel air pushing back. Like strictly speaking, when you push down like that, there is a little bit less overall a little bit more force pushing up on you than there was before but nowhere near enough to get us off the ground whereas obviously if you've got wings you can push down on loads of air and therefore loads of air pushes back on you so when you're drawing a force diagram um it seems a bit weird but what you do is you don't think about what the bird is doing so the bird is pushing on the air but you don't really think about that you think about what the bird's feeling the air the bird is pushing on the air so the bird is feeling the air pushing up on it, and you get a force time going back a bit like this. So a bird flies. Right, let's have a little look at, we, I'm gonna talk all about pterosaurs um, in an hour or two in the um, pterosaur show. Still haven't learned how to pronounce this, but this is the biggest flying reptile that as far as we know, ever lived. It's called Zagotlis <coughs> Northropi. Um, yeah, it had an 11 meter wingspan. It was massive, it was, I'm not going to do any spoilers. It was very, very, very big. And so obviously it was very, very heavy. So for a long time, scientists thought there's no way that thing could possibly have flown because it had a, a really heavy weight 
So there's no way that it would have been able to produce enough lift, like enough upwards force to be able to fly. And then recently they found out that, um, yeah, it could actually. What it must have done is have really, really strong muscular legs. So push itself two and a half meters into the air. It had to be able to jump two and a half meters into the air, which is very high, um, much taller than me. And then because it was that high, it could spread out its 11 meter wide wings and it, there was enough air underneath it that it could push down. And yeah, it did, it did, it definitely did, it definitely flew because it, it was very heavy, but <laughs> it also had very big wings. So the upwards force was still enough to get it off the ground. Good day. So, Okay, I think we'll do a couple of questions to see like how much you've understood that lesson. And then we'll look at the first question that I asked you. Why can't humans fly? And what is with the bits falling off of rockets? Here we go. So yeah, have a go at this little, because I've given you a lot of information there. Have a go at this little quiz before we finish. Question number one. Please can you find the mistake on my can of butter beans? <laughs> this is a I've still got the butter beans. Genuine mistake. You see it on cans all the time because in normal life they don't talk about weight the same way that physicists do. What is the mistake on my can of butter beans? You got it? So the answer is, as far as this lesson goes, the answer is that they've talked about weight, but then they've given a number, and what is this? It's grams. That's not what you measure weight in. Weight is a force that pulls things down, so it should be measured in newtons. If you've been doing my IGTSC physics lessons, then you could also have said, which is sort of, I suppose, technically more correct, that they should not have said weight, they should have said mass. So grams is right, but it's not the weight. But well done if you picked up on the fact that you can't have weight measured in grams. Question number two, careful with this one. Which of these would not be measured in Newtons? Which of these would not be measured in Newtons? A, how hard a husky pulls a sled. B, how fast a child pushes a shopping trolley. C, how much effort it takes to peel the lid off of corn scotch eggs. Which of those situations would you not measure in Newtons? A, how hard a husky pulls a sledge. B, how fast a child pushes a shopping trolley. Or C, how much effort it takes to peel the lid off corn scotch eggs. This caught a lot of people out on Facebook. The answer is... Um, it's B, because look, they've measured, they're measuring how fast something happens. So f how fast something happens, that's like the speed of something which would be measured in metres per second, not newtons. So it's uh, how hard a, h a husky pulls is a force, so measured in newtons. How much effort it takes, uh, that is actually a force as well. It takes, a, oh, it takes so long. I love them, but God, it's so annoying having to pull the lid off those corn scotch eggs. But if you're peeling, you are pulling, aren't you, really? So well done if you got that. I was trying to trick you. Uh, a person starts a car. So here's a force diagram of the car. There's a big arrow going forwards and a small arrow going backwards. So A, are they moving forwards or backwards? And B, can you draw on any force arrows that are missing? Are there any force arrows missing? If there are, can you draw them? Okay, so hopefully you're saying that they are moving forwards. You are correct, because the forwards arrow is bigger. And any force arrows that are missing? Hopefully you got both. I was thinking some of you might just draw the weight, because the car is on Earth. Um, but yeah, if the car's pushing down on the road, then the road is pushing back on the car. So there should be an equal. Give yourself extra pats on the back if you've drawn the arrows the same size, right? Because if like you draw the up arrow a bit bigger by accident, then technically the car would be sort of floating off in in a diagonal direction, wouldn't it? And the last one. A rocket's engine provides it with 10,000 newtons of upwards force. How much does the rocket weigh? Is it 10,000 newtons, less than 10,000 newtons, or more than 10,000 newtons? If a rocket's engine provides it with 10,000 newtons of force, what do we know about the rocket's weight? Exactly 10,000 newtons, less than 10,000 newtons, or more than 10,000 newtons? Uh, 
Uh, the answer is, you might have to draw a little diagram to help you understand this one. Uh, it must be less than 10,000 newtons, right? Let's do it. Uh, yeah, if you picture, <laughs> picture a rocket, obviously it's a rocket. Um, if the upwards force on the rocket is, can you see that? Yeah, is 10,000 newtons. Obviously the, the rocket wants to get off the ground. So the, the arrow pointing upwards has got to be less than the arrow pointing downwards. So the weight has got to be less than uh, 10,000 newtons. Well done if you got that. I've drawn the rocket like this as an answer to the final question, right? I asked you at the very start of the lesson, why can't humans fly without help? Um, yeah, it's technically all three of these. They're all kind of related, aren't they? So um, it's, they don't have wings, which is one of the reasons that they can't fly, because we can't push down on enough air to generate enough lift to get up. But, and people have tried this, like people have just put wings on themselves in the olden times and flapped, and they still couldn't get off the ground. Leonardo da Vinci had loads of machines where it was just wings flapping. That doesn't work because, uh, yeah, human muscles just, just aren't strong enough. We can't get enough oxygen to our bodies. We can't get strong enough muscles. We haven't got those hollow bones that let the oxygen flow through the bones. And, and also, like, what are you doing when you add when you add wings to yourself, which is a problem for flying. What are you doing when you're adding wings? You're, you're making yourself even heavier, aren't you? So it's just this vicious circle where you add big wings so that you can push down on loads of air, but now you've added more weight, so you need to have bigger wings. It's just, yeah, it, it just doesn't work. Um, and finally, yeah, most rockets are designed to have bits that fall off. Some of you will have known this, some of you don't know this. Uh, it's so cool. It's such a good idea. So rockets have got a huge amount of fuel in. The whole of Lesson 7 is about rockets. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, so they put all the fuel into these, like quite often these solid rocket boosters, uh, which give the rocket enough push to go up through the atmosphere. But obviously then the fuel runs out and you're just left with these two heavy things stuck on the side of the rocket. So they just break off and fall away. These days, um, we can recover them and use them again. But in the times of um, the Saturn V, they just fell off and were never seen again. Went into the sea, probably. But if you see one, tell NASA. Uh, yeah, so that's it. In fact, various bits of the rocket will fall off as it, as it travels further and further up into space, which we will talk about in lesson seven. So that is the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for coming. I'm so pleased that a load of you suggested flight. So next week, we're talking about hot air balloons. And then we're doing helicopters. We're going to make little helicopters. We're doing gliders. So we'll look at, get to look at gliding animals as well. We're doing um, aeroplane wings for one lesson and how like all the, everyone on the internet is talking about aeroplane wings wrong. So we'll sort that out. Um, and yeah, then rockets at the end. Yeah, very cool subject. But thank you to who suggested it. I'm just going to go on my Facebook page and see if anyone has said hello to me. Because um, I always put a post up on Facebook when I'm live on YouTube saying, you want to say hello? That would be nice. <laughs> um, if you happen to be new and you're thinking, this is weird, like, why doesn't she have a job? <laughs> well, I, this is actually my job. The, the amazing business model is I just do everything for free. So all of my lessons are free. Lego Storytime Show, IGCSE, um, physics lessons. It's all just streamed free like this on YouTube and Facebook. All the printouts are free. Lego Storytime Show, if you're coming um, at half past 10 today on YouTube. They, they don't have printouts, but the others do. The IGCC lesson even has like a PDF of homeworks for you. And it's all free. And it's just like, if you're using me, then you can pay me if you want. And enough people are paying me that I get enough money for it to be my job. And also like, it's very good value for you, really. Because what I'm saying is about five pounds a month um, is enough, because enough of you are watching uh, to make it work. So yeah, if you sign up, I have made some nice things to try and persuade you to sign up, obviously, because I need this to be my job, because it's the best job ever. Oh, loads of comments! Oh, Imogen and Ophelia are here. Yeah, I'm excited for the new topic as well. All right, so yeah, um, if you want to support me, you, you go to my About section on YouTube. You know where it is? It, it says About. Go to my like, YouTube channel, click About. It takes you to this website called Coffee, and yeah, you sign up, and I'll send you nice stuff. I'll send you Theatre of Science magazine. If you sign up with £5 a month, 
I send you my favourite past magazine, which is on mould. You get a free compostable plastic bag so that you can grow your own mould. I know, adults, you're welcome. Uh, and then compost it afterwards. There's a choose your own adventure quiz. You are a mould expert in a museum, but will you be fired or will you be promoted? Uh, they've all got a beautiful comic in them that my husband illustrates. This one's about the discovery of penicillin and how it wasn't just one man. It takes me ages to write theatre science magazine. It is a like, proper labour of love. I absolutely love writing it. It's just like writing a letter to you all. I'm getting more and more into it, so it's taking longer and longer to write. But basically, if you sign up to support me, you'd be on the list, and then you'll you'll get it whenever I've finished it. So yeah, if you sign up with five pounds, I'll send you mould. If you sign up with six pounds, I'll send you the mould magazine, and I'll also send you the latest one, which is on weeds, which comes with stickers and more beautiful comics and quizzes, so that you can identify flowers and lots of information about how incredible all the little plants that we just write off as weeds are, and how they've been used as medicine and foods, and yeah, they're brilliant. Right, sorry about that. Well, not sorry, because obviously I couldn't actually have this job if I didn't do my ad so that people didn't pay me. But now I am on Facebook just looking at comments. Imogen Ophelia, hello. Oh, Juavia <laughs> and Ryder are here. Excellent, hello. Juavia, it's because when you told me how to say your name, you like said it really slowly. So now I always want to say it really slowly as well. But now I'm just like saying it like, you know, properly. Hello. <laughs> Oh, Joe and Emma are here, all right. Balance force arrows up and down on cards because it's not seen off floating. Yes, thank you. Joe says the centre of the earth. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, 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 you're totally right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, if you were in the centre of the earth, you would obviously have other problems. But yeah, it would be totally balanced forces acting on you, wouldn't it? Because, well, you wouldn't be... It, well, like, no, you would be experiencing a force, wouldn't you? Because you would, I guess, I've never thought about this, gravity would be pulling you the other way. There'd be loads of stuff around you, so you'd be getting pulled on equally from all different directions. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, hello! Oh, Jay and Daisy and Daniel! Alive, everyone! Wow, nice! Hiya! Man, you've been supporting for absolutely ages, haven't you? Ah, oh, that's nice. Hello. Uh, see you at Lego Story. Yes, you will, Ryder and Juaria. <laughs> Naomi and Josie are here and ready for a new topic. Yeah, me too. Ah, we think bits fell off because they were meant to. Okay, fine. I couldn't fool Joe and Emma. Um, say all three reasons why humans can't fly. Yes, well done. You are having a good physics morning. Oh, all right, Robin and Hissy the flammable snake. Whoa, Robin and his toy Hissy the flammable snake have uh, been joined by Steve the beluga whale and Toffee cuddly dog I got for my birthday may be flammable. Aww. Yeah, I would just, I mean, just assume everything is flammable, I guess, unless it says not flammable on it. Hello, Arthur and Abba. Uh, hello, Lara. The answer to question one, I think, is all three. Lana. Yes. Okay, fine. I need to make the questions more tricksy. That is what I'm getting from this. Oh, all right. Zach and Henry. Underwater. Yes. Oh, and there's a science gif from Zach and Henry. Science is cool. Yeah. Now I want to be part of a gif. A smug gif. Science is cool. I'll work on that. Oh, all right, Edmund. Oh, hello. Edmund says the upwards force on the rocket would be more than 10,000 newtons. Um, because that's the force provided by the rocket's engines. But you also need to add the upwards force provided by the ground. So the rocket could actually weigh less than or equal to 10,000 and still go... <laughs> Edmund says the upwards force on the rocket would be more than 10,000 newtons because that's the force provided by the rocket engines. But you, the upwards force by the... Oh, this is interesting. Should we talk about this? Oh, hello, Idris and Alwyn and Emery's and little baby Karen. Hi, Karen. You okay? Right, Edmund, I'm going to say hello to people and then I'm going to come back to you. All right, Avery and Will, hello. All right, Isaac and Freddie. It's Arthur, isn't it? Man alive, I'm just get, I'm getting worse. I mean, that's science. People don't generally get better at memory the older they get. All right, tiger and birds, hello. Hectic morning, so only just joined. Oh no, no crying faces for you. That's a good thing, you made it, that's awesome. And it's all on catch up, right? You can just go back and watch it. If I finally stop the lesson, then you can go back and watch it. Penguin, nice. Only C is unsafe. Uh, is that right? Yeah, did she only die once? Oh, that's not a bad morning for Wemmy. Hello, Tor, and Amber's here, hello. All right, let's go, come on, let's go back to Edmund's thing then. Have we got time? Yeah. Lego story time isn't for ages. Although I did just shove it all to one side for this lesson, so I, I have to set it up again. Right, Edmund is saying you've got the force of the rocket's engines going up. 
but you've also got the force of the ground because we've said that if something has weight, this is very good, isn't it? So, yeah, what Edmund's thinking, I guess, is you've got the force of weight acting down, which is, I don't know, let's say 10,000 newtons, but you've also got the force of um, the ground pushing up, which would also be 10,000 newtons. So are you saying that actually the force pulling down is 10,000 newtons and the ground is pushing up at 10,000 newtons, so the weight kind of doesn't count, and therefore, like, if you just added a one newton of force, then it would get off the ground. That's very good. That's very good. It's just throwing me into turn more, Edmund. Um, I mean, what the rocket... When we say, like, the force of the the force of the engines, what we mean is, is that the engines are just kind of making the rocket push on the ground more. Does that make sense? So when a rocket, like what a rocket engine does, and we'll do more of this in lesson seven, is it just obviously like there's just a massive explosion and you get this tremendous amount of force pushing down on the ground. So the ground pushes up more, which is what up thrust is, which is what the force on a rocket is. Does that make sense? Does that help? I really answered the question, have I? Yeah, I guess I have. Yeah, so so the the um, engine, let's say, it just adds like loads more force. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what you mean. I yeah, I think I've answered the question. It's hard when you're not here because you can't argue with me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they, we will talk more about it in lesson seven. But if you, if that hasn't answered your question, can you get back to me? And then we can cover it when we cover rockets again, because we'll know more about forces by then as well. So it'll be a bit easier. All right, I'm going to go before Edmund asks me anything else. Frankly, I'm going to go and set up Lego story time because it's like shambles at the moment. So yeah, I will see some of you at half past ten for learning about pterosaurs. I'm going to go and mull on what you've just said, Edmund, with a piece of paper and a pen. Uh, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!